Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's New Stand, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Scott Snyder, and we're going to talk about Noctura. Now, that is a comic that was published by Image Comics. I did review number one, and I am going to give you guys a TLDR in a minute. We need to talk about the most obvious thing I think we all saw coming, and that is the fact that it is going to be a TV deal. This is awesome. I absolutely love this book, and I want to tell you all about it, but there is going to be mild spoilers in this video about Nectura, not past three or four, I would say, but I want to give you an idea of what to expect when this is actually made into a show. Now, the great thing about this is not only the story, but the cast is plenty diverse. I don't see them hardly doing a whole lot of changes. And honestly, I wish, I wish that L Hawkeye was not going, new Hawkeye, Hawk, uh, Kate Bishop, wasn't going to be played by Haley Seinfeld because she would be absolutely perfect for this role. She looks just like Val. So with this being made a TV show, I'm going to talk about it. I absolutely love this book. And again, it's by Scott Snyder and Tony Daniels. But basically, in a nutshell, the whole big premise is the world has gone dark. One thing they ask over and over again is where were you when the big PM hit? Now, the big PM is the darkness when the light does not return. It only took 23 minutes for the world to descend into complete and utter darkness. Now, we have a few main characters. One is Val Riggs. Her call name is Sundog. Basically, she transports people and goods along deadly unlit roads with a heavily lit 18-wheeler. She also has a brother named Emery, or M, and they both were adopted. Val was previously legally blind and had to have surgery to actually repair her eyes, and that happened shortly after she was adopted. Now, this book picks up at 13 p.m., meaning 13 years after the sun stopped working. The story is 10, 10 miles outside of the Colorado outpost, the biggest outpost, and we get introduced to Shades. Now, Shades are what you or any animal becomes when exposed to the darkness for too long. About 10 hours and you become a shade. Now, a shade is simply a monstrous version of yourself. Whether it's a fish or a human, you undergo this kind of biological transformation. Or I guess a better way to describe it is a metamorphosis. And human shades, they are the apex predators. They communicate with each other. They live together. They hunt in packs. And they can bring down any outpost that they want if it is not properly lit. Now, if caught quickly enough, the process of becoming a shade can be reversed through stuff like dialysis and solar lighting. But if it reaches your gums, it's a bad sign. If your eyes turn, you are not coming back. Same with your gums becoming black. It is too late. At this point in the story, the shades have cross-pollinated and basically made their own ecosystem of the earth with no room for humans. They have pledged their allegiance to the darkness. Uh, Val and M live at the Colorado Outpost, Outpost 41, the town that was basically built around a manufacturing company that made light bulbs. Perfect place, right? But at Outpost 41, we meet a grandfather and his granddaughter, Augustus and Bailey, both very important characters to the story, asking Val for a ferry to a place that is a sanctuary, a full area of sun and sunshine. But this is something that Val doesn't believe even exists. It's a myth. It's an urban legend, right? And she actually turns them down to only find out that her brother M has been infected and his gums are getting dark. Uh, they start dialysis, but they don't have that solar light that they need 
and where they were going to get it is in Tipton. Now, Tipton is the outpost that had everything they needed, but it's gone dark. Shades attacked, and they could not fight back. Tipton is no longer. This is when we see Val actually go back to Augustus and agree to take them both to this so-called sanctuary so she can get M the help that he needs. But if the money isn't there or the place doesn't exist, she will kill them without a moment's hesitation. So they have 618 miles to go. 16, 618 miles to make it to the sanctuary. But that is when we are introduced to our main antagonist by the name of Blackfoot Bill, who has basically this weird carbo nanotubes molded to his skin. He's just black. And he's on the lookout for Augustus because he's the man that killed the son. We also meet Bellwether, who won't really be super important to the story, but she does become important towards the end. We're not going to discuss that. I don't want to give it all away. But she's a friend of Val and M. She works at Outpost 41 and she helps the ferrymen, right? She is the eyes in the sky or on the land or in the dark, whatever you want to say. So Val and the gang must stop at mile marker 235 at an outpost to charge up the rig. Everything is electric, right? And we learn from Augustus that he and his brother invented a machine that was supposed to see invisible cosmic particles, matter, basically, that passes through our universe without interacting with anything, not even light. They don't interact with light because they are actually from an alternate plane called Terras. Now, there is the, the fourth. The one they live on is the fourth Terra, but there is nine Terras all together. The first Terra is called Lux. Terra, L-U-X. And the machine was supposed to open a doorway to this Terra of heavenly light, right? But it keyed in upon the wrong particle and opened the wrong doorway. And that is essentially what caused all this. But right on their tail is Blacktop Bill, who has every intention of killing Augustus. And during the confrontation... Um, as he pleads for his life, basically, Augustus spills the beans that he has, in fact, created what we probably could have all guessed, hell on earth. Even if not on purpose, he created the worst kind of darkness and tells her, tells Val, there is no way back. But he can save Emery if, if she is just able to get away from Blackfoot Bill or Blacktop Bill, I'm sorry. But... In a mere moment of sheer stupidity or selflessness, I'm not really sure which one, Augustus opens up the back of the rig and tells Blackfoot Bill to come and get him. Uh, and he does with a massive harpoon through the chest. But before he leaves, he leaves a notebook with everything to save the world, supposedly. Now, in the hands of his granddaughter, Bailey, who will become more important later on. I really like Bailey a lot. She's adorable. But we're not going to get into that again, because that's a lot of spoilers towards the end of the series. So we do see them escape, right? And the most um, psychotic twist with Blackfoot Bill is that he ties Augustus as a shade on top of his car to kill his granddaughter with. Yeah. And then we see Emery's eyes, and they have changed, and there is no going back. And then there's two more issues. But with that, I think, basically, you can understand what they are going for. A world filled with darkness. A world filled with dramatics, whether it is the heroine or it is the antagonist. This world that Scott Snyder has built is fantastic. And I absolutely love every minute of it. And that's why I'm not really ruining it. Because I think you should definitely check it out. It is my favorite as far as the creator-owned titles. I love Geiger and some of the other Carmen. Some of the other ones too. But this is right on top. And I really want this TV show to do well. I really am excited for what they make of it. Again, just pay for Haley Steinfeld. She's absolutely perfect for Val. I would love to see that. So... Let me know, of course, what you guys think about whether it's Noctura 
the story or whether it's the TV show that's coming up. I'd love to hear about it. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.